Welcome back. This is Dave from ERC, and today we're going to do part three of the Twin Tundra build series. And basically, we're finishing up the plane. I'm putting on the motors on the wings, putting the wing servos in, finishing the tail, and then checking everything to make sure it's flight ready. So stay tuned. Now you'll notice that the servos are orientated like this. This is for the uh, aileron right there. And then for the flap servo, it goes in this way, like that. But there is a caveat. On the other wing, however, the servo for the flap actually goes in towards the center and uh, towards the fuselage. The hole's cut a little bit different, but it's obvious how it goes. So that's the difference. The aileron servo still faces towards the outside like that. So just uh, centering the aileron servo up on the servo tester and then putting on the horn right here and put the screw in. So when I get done, it'll sit right in the wing like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue in the servo with some fabric tack and uh, let that dry. Just put a few drops around where you need it and then glue it in. And then we'll fish the wire down through the channel. Now if you didn't watch the previous video I urge you to do it because I showed there how to test these to find out which was the flap and which was the aileron. This one turned out to be the flap and I marked it as such. So that means this one has to be the aileron and that's the one we want to plug in and make sure the colors match up with it. Yellow to yellow, just like that. And once we plug it in, we could put some tape around it before we tuck it in. All right, I now have it taped up with some of this and just gonna push it into the slot. So I've centered up the flap servo with my servo tester, put the arm on it and put the screw in and it's gonna go right in here like that but the wire for it is a little long, so I think I'm going to use my crimping tool to add a shorter wire with a connector right here. Now, if you don't know how to use one of these crimping tools, I have a video on that as well, and you can take a look at that and see how it works. Now, I found these clippers at uh, Walmart in the jewelry section. They're some of the best clippers I've ever found. They work really well, so I'm just going to cut this wire off about here and then put a plug on it. The servo is now glued in with some fabric tack like I did the aileron servo. So the flap servo is aimed straight up when it's centered just like the aileron servo. I've cut this wire down to size and put a plug on using the crimping tool, the servo lead crimping tool. And now I can just connect them and stuff them into this hole, maybe put a little piece of tape over it. All right, the servo lead is now tucked down in the hole right here, and I'm just going to put a piece of packing tape over the hole, just like that. Now I put the bottom plate on the motor here, and let's go ahead and we'll fasten that onto the nacelle with these screws right here, so we can start to make up the wiring for the plug that goes into the fuselage. Okay, the motor is now fastened on, and we have the wires right here where they can go through the channel in the bottom of the nacelle. And this is a 1400 kV motor, and it's going to be using a 7x5 prop and a 4-cell battery to run it. Now I want to extend out these wires with this 18-gauge wire, or 18-AWG wire that I got from Motion RC. And this is the same type of wire that's on the motor itself. Maybe even a little bigger in diameter, I don't know. But it's ample to extend these wires. So that's what I'm going to use. So on one end of this cable, I'll have to have one of these. So it can plug on here like that. And so I'll need three of those. Or you could just use the ends off your ESC if you previously cut these off you could recycle them and use them for the project. The other end of the wire will have one of these sockets on it. I showed that in the last video where we had those on the plane on the fuselage and this will plug into that. This is the male side of that triple plug for ESC wires. And you can get those from Hobby King. 
So let's just get an estimate for the wire length. It looks like it's going to come right around like this and then be right about here where it can plug in. So maybe at least that much right there. You can measure it yourself on your plane because it may vary. But I'm going to cut it off right there and I'll need three of them. Just soldering up some leads here. It's nice to use a piece of wood. You can get a pretty good job done without the solder cooling down too quick instead of using clips, metal clips that cause problems. Alright, now put some solder on that. Let's heat this up again. Good and hot. Press that down in there. Let it harden. Let it solidify. Okay, that should get it. So to put these connectors together, you have to actually slide the wire down through the front of it like this and then pull them through. And once you get them in there, you can you can put it in a vise and just tap them in or try to press them in by putting them down against a piece of wood. Now on the other end, we're just going to have three of these connectors soldered right on here with a little heat shrink over them. So I've made up two of the leads here, one for each wing, and what we have to do is route them through the foam, and then I'll put a tie wrap down here just to hold it against the spar that's under there. So let's go ahead and connect them up. No special order, because the ESC plugs can be reversed if the motor's going the wrong way. So we just need to make a little slot for this to run through and a tie wrap right here. So I fastened this end of the cable over the spar that's inside the wing and that holds that really firmly. And then I just have some blend derm tape over the wire right here and a little bit of foam tack under the wire too just to hold it. So there we go. And the motor can be unplugged right here now. Now you should have a pack of parts like this and this pack of parts has the linkages in it for the servos, for the wing servos. There they are right there. So we need to get them out and install the linkages now that we got this wiring done. So I had to drill out the second hole in the servo arm with this drill bit so I could get the control rod in. And the control rod just goes right in that second hole. And then to get the ball joint to fix, you have to go right down, move the servo forward just a little, put the ball joint on, and then just press it on. There we go. And that's the flaps. Then there's a little keeper. So there's a little keeper that I just showed you, one of these, that you can put underneath the arm and then just clip it onto the control rod like that. I'll do the same thing up here on the aileron servo. Alright, just putting on the clip for the aileron servo and now that's done. So that completes the left hand wing and I'll just do the right hand wing the same way off camera. So now we're going to assemble the horizontal stabilizer and it just consists of two pieces right here that lock together with this plastic piece and also a spar that you just slide in the socket. Then you just pass it through here and there's a couple uh, screws, one here and one on the other one that you screw in in the bottom. So I'm going to slide it through just like that and then we'll put the other side on. And you can see where it's going in the socket right there. Just fit it together. And then when you flip it over, see if I can get that in the picture. There's two screws, one here and one here that go on. And then there's two screws to hold on the tail wheel as well. So I got the two screws in for the 
stabilizer here and over here. That's the horizontal stabilizer. And then I put two screws in here for the tail wheel. One here and one here. Now I'm just going to connect up the control rod on this ball right here. And then we can adjust it. There we go. Now we'll go back to the servos inside and do the adjustment to get the elevator flat. So I adjusted the grub screw on the elevator servo right here to make the elevator flat and level. Okay, I just put the cowling on and of course you knew I finished the tail section with the wheel and I've got the wings done so now we're just checking it out. So I'm going to try first of all the ailerons and they seem to be working and there's a little rudder mix in with the ailerons and then we have the elevator rudder with tail wheel okay so all that works now let's check the motors okay the motors work and you can see they're spinning like this and like that spinning towards this direction now let's check the differential thrust so I'm going to hold this switch now I'm going to try the differential thrust by moving this stick here which is the rudder stick Okay, there's one motor going without the other and there's the other motor going so the differential thrust works good okay one more thing let's just check and make sure the flaps work flaps one, flaps two, flaps one, flaps yep they work pretty good okay so I just need to get the landing gear on it and uh, we'll probably be ready for a test flight pretty soon as soon as this uh, hurricane Florence gets done and there's some good weather out there if you didn't see the other two videos in this series, part one and part two, you might want to take a look at them. So don't forget to stay tuned and subscribe and click that bell icon for the notifications so you'll get messages when the next video comes up about some more exciting RC stuff. See you next time.